Hey everyone, Krista here, and today we're at the Coral Reef Restaurant at Epcot Disney World. If you're thinking of making reservations at the Coral Reef, I'm going to go over all of the details to help you decide if this might be worth it for you and your family. So let's get into it. The Coral Reef Restaurant is a casual in-park table service restaurant located in the World and Nature area of Epcot and is open for lunch and dinner. The Coral Reef is connected to the Seas Building with Nemo and Friends with an entrance that is tucked away to the right of the Nemo Ride entrance, so it can be easy to miss if you're not looking for it. If you've been to the Seas before, you'll already know that it's a massive aquarium. This aquarium is the second largest aquarium in the U.S. behind the Georgia Aquarium and is one of the largest man-made ocean environments on the planet, holding enough water to fill 54 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The main draw of the Coral Reef restaurant is the intimate atmosphere with spectacular views of the Seas Aquarium. The seats in the dining room are theater-style tiered seating, so everyone in the restaurant has a full view of the aquarium wall as you dine. The aquarium is home to a living coral reef and over 2,000 sea creatures including sharks, sea turtles, and stingrays. So there's an ever-changing scenery that never gets old. The menu comes with a QR code that you can scan to see the Coral Reef Restaurant Spotting Guide. This guide is filled with all the information about the various creatures in the aquarium and is a great way to pass the time as you wait for your meal. The menu here is the same for both lunch and dinner and comes as no surprise that the menu focuses on ocean fresh seafood but it also has a prime rib and a harissa chicken entree, as well as a mushroom ravioli as their plant-based entree. The prices here range anywhere between $11 to $18 for appetizers and $29 to $36 for entrees. And as you're looking over the menu, you'll be given some complimentary bread to start with, which of course comes with some salted butter. We decided to start our meal with the seafood artichoke dip and the New England clam chowder. The seafood artichoke dip is a creamy blend of seafood, spinach, and artichokes, and it was the perfect start to our meal. And the New England clam chowder comes with baby clams, applewood smoked bacon, potatoes, and cream. And both of these appetizers were really good, but if I could only choose one to order again, I would probably go with the seafood artichoke dip because it was so delicious. For our entrees, we decided to go with the grilled mahi-mahi and the seared verlasso salmon. The grilled mahi-mahi comes with street corn style salad and cilantro lime crema over garlic jasmine rice and is the coral reef's most popular entree. The seared Velasso salmon was a recommendation by our waitress and comes with roasted parsnip and a piquillo pepper, bacon, and lemon beurre blanc. This salmon dish was so delicious, and out of the two entrees we tried, I actually preferred the salmon, so I definitely recommend it. The Coral Reef is known for their chocolate wave dessert, but our server recommended the Bailey's Almond and Jack Daniels Mousse, so we decided to go with our server's recommendation and get the Bailey's Almond and Jack Daniels Mousse. And it was so good! This is a chocolate ganache mousse with candied almonds and is the only dessert that you can get exclusively here at the Coral Reef. So if you are thinking of heading to the Coral Reef, here are a few things to keep in mind. As with all in-park Disney table service restaurants, you do need confirmed reservations for the total number of guests regardless of age, as well as a theme park reservation and a valid admission. Unfortunately, dining reservations alone do not guarantee you access to the park. The Coral Reef is an easier reservation to get. We were able to book our reservation only a week in advance, and there were still a lot of times available, so it's a great option if you're down to the wire and still looking for a restaurant with a great atmosphere. 
And if you do decide to dine here, my recommendations will definitely be the seafood artichoke dip for the appetizer and the seared verlasso salmon entree. I really enjoyed both of these and I don't think you can go wrong with either one. By the way, if you are finding this information helpful, I would love it if you would hit that like button and subscribe if you would like to get more ideas like this to do in my beautiful state of Florida. I release a new video every week and the best way to be able to see them is by subscribing. And finally, if you're an annual pass holder, don't forget to use your dining discount here. Pass holders receive 10% off of non-discounted price of food and non-alcoholic beverages during all meal periods. And if you made it this far in the video, I would love to hear from you on Instagram at Krista Travels, where I release content almost daily on the videos that I'm currently working on. If you're looking for even more restaurant ideas to try while at Disney, then you'll want to check out the playlist that just popped up on the screen. In this playlist, I'll go through several of Disney's restaurants across the parks, including Space 220, Be Our Guest, and California Grill. Until next time, everyone, I hope you have an amazing day and go out and enjoy some Florida sunshine.